Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Ann Emanuel. Tonight, concern from some community members as a proposal for a new apartment complex in Elmira is going before the city's planning board in July. CDS Housing built the current Maple Ave Apartments in 2017. Now the 55 and older apartments could be seeing a similar complex right across the road. Over 40 people coming forward at last night's city council meeting protesting the new complex to be built on the former McNaught Field. The proposal goes to the planning board for approval in July. The first man has been sentenced in the case of a county's wide child sex trafficking ring. Andrew Darty has been sentenced to 40 years to life after being indicted on rape and sex trafficking of a minor. Darty, with 17 others, abused the same minor victim over the span of seven years. Darty pleaded guilty to predatory sexual assault, sexual assault against a child, sex trafficking of a child, and compelling prostitution, which are all felonies. Two women in our area were honored with Lifetime Achievement Awards for the time and commitment they dedicated to community service. Our Maggie Hall spoke with Rose and Ellie about the spirit of volunteerism and what this means to them. Rose and Ellie have dedicated a combined 50 years of community service partnering with Corning Salvation Army. I spoke with them today about giving back, getting involved, and what they've taken away from it all. <laughs> It's humbling because you realize that you're just a tiny, tiny spot in the plan of everything. And so I'm, I'm very grateful that I've been able to do the little I could do. And it's so satisfying knowing uh, that you've helped, even if it's the smallest piece of, of your time. They were presented with the Lifetime Achievement Award by the Board of the Salvation Army. This is a fantastic opportunity to see these two women who have served so faithfully to the mission of the Salvation Army now being recognized for all of their faithfulness and commitment. We're excited. Like mother, like daughter. Mary Ellen Monaghan, Program Director for the Children at Corning Salvation Army, was present to see her mom, Ellie Nasser, honored for her commitment to volunteerism. I'm just very proud of her, just very proud of how she raised all, all of us, my family, and um, to teach us that it's not always about us, that we need to reach out and we need to give back. It's a happy thing to see and to be with her, and it's humbling. I don't think either of us expected any recognition. We just did what we feel the need that we saw. And if it wasn't uh, maybe a little bit younger, we would still be able to do it. Rose and Ellie were recognized as shining examples of what it means to be involved and to truly give back to your community. Maggie Hall, Big Fox News, Corning. Corning's Alternative School of Math and Science is celebrating 20 years of educating students. Since the school opened its doors on East 1st Street in 2004, over 850 students have come and gone. ASMS teaches children from the age of 10 to 14. 100% of students are involved in a form of extracurricular activity, and 95% of alumni are honor students in high school. Chemung County's online COVID dashboard is getting a makeover. Chemung County Executive Chris Moss announced that the website will expand to include information about other diseases, such as tick-borne diseases, food-borne conditions, and STDs. The dashboard will also include additional directory information for the Chemung County Board of Health. There are some signs of hope as rescue crews frantically search for a missing submersible. The sub disappeared near the site of the Titanic. A surveillance plane has detected underwater noises, but as Doug Luzader reports, there isn't much time left to reach the five people on board. A Canadian P-3 surveillance plane like this one using advanced sonar technology has heard what's described as a banging sound near the wreck of the Titanic. Could it be coming from five survivors on board Titan, the submersible that disappeared on Sunday? Just after midnight this morning, the U.S. Coast Guard tweeted, 
ROV, Remote Operated Vehicle Operations, were relocated in an attempt to explore the origin of the noises. Hopefully we can have a, a nice little stroke of luck here. So they picked up a banging sound from one of the particular sono buoys. They'll know when they heard that sound and then they'll be able to triangulate and listen on some of the other recordings they may have made from the other sonar buoys or other vessels with the sonar. The search is being coordinated by the U.S. Coast Guard, but if Titan is still intact, it only has about one day of air left. OceanGate, the Washington state-based company that operates Titan, had once been involved in a lawsuit with its former director of marine operations over safety concerns, and a group of outside experts also raised issues back in 2018. A friend of one of the passengers, who was also an oceanographer, suggested this may have been just a matter of time. But we knew this was going to happen at some point along the way. And uh, knew darn well it would. And uh, we knew all the difficulties there would be about how do you recover from that. Uh, if the sub is stuck on a shipwreck, if uh, they lose batteries, if they're caught on the bottom some other way. Uh, and nothing was done about it. The man suspected in a series of knife attacks against women in the New York City subway has been arrested. 28-year-old Kamal Rideout was arrested Tuesday in connection to the attacks. Three women were slashed while on the subway over the weekend. Authorities believe he randomly targeted his victims, slicing their legs with a knife. Rideout has been hospitalized for a psychiatric examination. He faces multiple counts of assault. There's evidence Americans are still not confident the economy is out of the woods yet. More Americans are spending their dollars at dollar stores, and a new report indicates what passes as an average income may not be enough. Madeline Rivera reports from Washington. Prices are coming down, and the Federal Reserve just hit pause on interest rate hikes. But Americans are still feeling the pinch. Gas, uh, groceries, uh, cleaner, uh, name something has went up in price. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell is on Capitol Hill taking questions from lawmakers. Powell says it's way too soon to declare victory, with inflation still above the Fed's 2% target. My colleagues and I understand the hardship that high inflation is causing. Households and businesses are also struggling with tight budgets and credit. Many are flocking to bargain retailers like dollar stores searching for savings. Discount supermarket Aldi's says it saw more middle and high income shoppers last year. And according to one recent survey, Americans making six figures are now 15 percent more likely to shop at dollar stores compared to last year. Why did just because you make a lot of money do you have to go spend the highest prices on everything? It's prioritizing your spending. Another poll shows Americans say their families need at least $85,000 a year to get by comfortably, much more than the median household income of $71,000. And more pain could be on the way, with economic experts predicting the Fed could raise interest rates again. We think maybe one hike will be it for the rest of the year. It really depends on how the inflation data comes in. If it keeps coming in a little bit softer, I think the doves uh, will, will have some say, and it's possible we could get another pause. Powell will return to the Hill Thursday to take questions from senators. In Washington, Madla Rivera, Fox News. We have your complete forecast still ahead, plus this. People around the world are rolling out their mats to celebrate the International Day of Yoga. I'm Marianne Rafferty. I've got details coming up. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. Hi everyone, welcome. I'm meteorologist Sam Ryan. Had some sunshine out here, some passing clouds. Beautiful shot in Syracuse. And look at that day we had a beautiful afternoon. Now, the clouds are going to be moving in, heading into our Thursday. The humidity will be on the rise. And we'll have chances at a few spotty thunderstorms developing here Thursday. A better chance, though, as we head into Friday and Saturday, as an upper level low begins to move in. And so looking at the big picture here, kind of show you that upper low, there it is spinning in a counterclockwise fashion and watch it all kind of lift northward. We'll see that movement as I put this into motion. And so we'll have chance at a few showers and storms arriving in here Thursday, 
but more than likely we'll see a lot of those hold off until maybe Friday morning getting some showers in here and then additional showers with a few embedded thunderstorms into the day on Friday afternoon. So here's the zoomed in look at things and we see some of those showers lifting up. So getting a few of those increasing humidity, increasing cloud cover as we go through the day, turning a little bit gloomy at times and we'll see a, additional showers kind of pulsating through here uh, wave after wave. So as far as rainfall and mounts are concerned, generally speaking around three tenths of an inch through 7 p.m. on Friday, but we'll have additional showers and a few thunderstorms Saturday and even into Sunday. Overnight tonight, we'll see temperatures falling down 53 degrees at 6 a.m. as we head out the door. Uh, in the morning, uh, officially low around 52. Winds gusting up to 15 miles per hour, so not bad there. And as we look at that chance of precipitation through the afternoon and quickly diminishing heading into the later part of the day, 54 here at 7 a.m., 63 at noon, and 67 at 5 o'clock with those showers again moving on by. So 70 degrees we'll say for a high temperature here Thursday, average high is 81. Underneath some of that cloud cover, trending cooler. And uh, sunrise officially 531, sunset at 846. This is our first full official day of summer, astronomically speaking, since we had our solstice. The solstice occurred on Wednesday morning. And so we look ahead into the day Friday, we're a little bit warmer, high 78, chance at a few showers and thunderstorms. And that continues again into the day on Saturday. This upper low is going to be spinning and bringing with it wave after wave of showers and storms. That threat continues into the day Sunday, perhaps a little more sunshine, and temperature is now beginning to warm up here. We're at 84 degrees for a daytime high Sunday, and again on Monday, and shower threats continue. Now we might get some break in between a lot of these waves, and then we'll have another system moving in sometime by the middle part of next week.